As promised, I'm back here on Crypto Comics with another Native American comic book to share with you. All of you image heads from the 1990s, remember this crappy comic, huh? But boy, that cover though, right? This is Shaman's Tears by Mike Grell, issue number one. And uh, this is the best part of it. Done. There's a lot I could read here. Uh, this goes on in the back also, here and here. I'm actually not going to read it because it was really kind of boring. This comic book started out really awesome. And the, the I'm going to tell you straight up, there's two different plot threads running through this entire book. And they do not intersect in my mind very well. So this opening scene is set in the past. The Berlin Wall has just fallen. And the countries that rose out of the former USSR, that's the Soviet Union, kids. Look it up on Wikipedia. You're going to want to know what the effects of communism are before you vote for communists. Those countries have gotten into a dispute over who owns the Soviet space station orbiting Earth, and it has left a cosmonaut stranded for months as they argue. So here we see outside the space station, this, uh, this CCCP cosmonaut is tightening a bolt in space, and all of a sudden, this pickaxe just slams into his helmet. Actually, I love the next page. The next page is the best part of this comic. Oh, that's dope. This, this is a comic that is uh, pulling me in. This is a plot that's interesting. Who's this guy? He's an American. You can tell by the flag. It's the stars and bars. Old Glory taking control of this space station. Docking port secure. General Penning. So they talk and talk and there's an eyeball like flying right there. And they get inside, and this is, uh, this is where it really gets even more interesting, as if that murder wasn't interesting enough. This is the zero-G genetics lab, in vitro fertilization, plasma oxygenation, biomechanical embryo chambers, Noah's Ark in a test tube, tissue samples, canine, lion, wolf, badger, and this. What the hell is it? The stuff dreams are made of. Or nightmares. Oh, Q! Security! And like, here's, so basically it's like the island of Dr. Moreau in space. That's interesting to me. And then we cut to a uh, Native American on a motorcycle. Very reminiscent of Lone Wolf. Except uh, Lone Wolf's much better, much more engaging. My horse is prancing. They are coming. My horse is neighing. They are coming. Prancing. They are coming. All over the universe, they come. They will dance. May you behold them. A horse nation. They will dance. Wow. That was a really amazing poem by Black Elk. If that doesn't inspire you to want to keep reading this comic book, nothing will. So here, the rebellious renegade Native American. He's not actually Native American. He's half Native and half Irish. He's, he's Black Irish. God, I hate this place. Oh... White privilege taken over. Entering Medicine Hat Reservation. Mm -hmm. There we go. So he went to the Medicine Hat Reservation, and then we cut away to the interesting plot again. The Native American plot is garbage. This plot over here, though, about the Dr. Moreau Island in space, that's, this is interesting. And elsewhere, Congress has appointed a special investigative committee to look into the question of civil rights for patented life forms, the controversy stems from Circle C Enterprises developing of gene splicing techniques, which have resulted in unique combinant life forms designed for industry and space exploration. Patoff, keep him under control while the committee is here, or I'll have him recycled. You wouldn't do that. Animus is the first. He's too valuable a specimen. Costly, you mean. He's killed three guards. Plus Thomas up on the station. Meanwhile, the controversy rages as animal rights groups demand equality for these new life forms. That was not my fault. You head, you, head of the Soviet space research program, you should have known. Cherkov went beyond his authorization. I should be reading this like a Russian, shouldn't I? Let, allow me to start over. It was not my fault. You, head of the Soviet space research program, you should have known. Cherkov went beyond his authorization and carried the experiment too far. How was I to know? And you, now I have to read this part over again because this, 
actually does not go together at all. It's really weird. Meanwhile, the controversy rages as animal rights groups demand equality for these new life forms and religious groups who are fundamentally opposed to man dabbling in the creation business. That sentence does not actually make sense. These should be two separate sentences. The Catholic Church has convened the Ecumenical Council to debate whether a half-human creature created by artificial means, conceived in a test tube, and nurtured in a biomechanical womb has a soul. Oh, two. What's he saying? And the Ku Klux Klan is warned of the dangers of racial contamination by the existence of the group they call the Blood. What I'm saying is, would you want your sister to marry one? I cannot believe that the Ku Klux Klan got a plug in this comic book. Like, the Ku Klux Klan, in the 90s, the Ku Klux Klan was like 300 hillbillies in the woods. And now I'm supposed to think that they're a force to be reckoned with, or it's, even though it is kind of weird because this is exactly what uh, mainstream media would do. They would immediately go to the Klan for a comment. Your comment, sir. White supremacists everywhere, blah, 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 blah. I like white supremacists are everywhere. Approach the maiden as one would approach any shy creature of the earth. Gently, slowly, one step at a time, as one approaches a young antelope trembling in a cactus patch, for the shy heart is the same. These were the Sioux. Now we have a sexy native girl just like taking a bath, which, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Hello, Sadie. Joshua Brand. I waited for you, you bastard, crack! But look, ooh, nip slip right there. We got a nip in an image comic. That is, that is big trouble. I did not see, uh, I did not see mature audiences. The person that sold this to me when I was a kid could be in jail right now for that. I'm gonna dive right back into the water after I got out of it nude just to punch you. Okay. And then you cut back to this tour of the facility where these animal-human hybrids are living and learning to uh, increase and enhance their skills. So, you know, like this little guy is part badger. Which is so stupid. And he's lifting weights. And this, this fellow who's, you know, part monkey is able to do the work of two men. And he's gassing up this lawnmower so that it goes 200 miles an hour. And then you have this hot chick with red eyes who's combined with a bat. So she can't see very well in light, but you know, at night, big time, big time, right? And then of course they start creating pleasure models and I'm not sure what this chick is combined with. She's just like a sexy black chick. And so they, you know, they're trying to seduce the government guy to give him more funds, of, of course. And then we cut back to this native stuff and he's so upset because he's half native and no one will accept him. The whites won't accept him. The natives won't accept them. Woe is me, but I ride this awesome chopper and wear these cool glasses and look like Elvis in this picture. And then he goes to see his mother, who's living under a tree. Like, she's a hobbit. And she's gonna die, of course, like... And she demands that he goes on a spirit journey, like, with her last breaths, and then she dies. Old Irish eyes here is very upset. I I, and I don't understand because his mother is Irish and why did they reject him but she's been living on the reservation this whole time. So really, this, this doesn't make any sense. But my girl obviously loves Native Americans. What is life? It is the flash of a firefly in the night. It is the breath of a buffalo in winter. It is the little shadow that runs across the grass and looses itself in the sunset. Crowfoot. And then this is the combat model He's part wolf. His wolf traits have been maximized for strength, cunning, survival, and above all, leadership. But the thing is, is these genetically modified human-animal hybrids, they have the same lifespan as an animal, so they don't live for that long. And that way, they're easier to control because they're gonna die. So it's kind of like Roy Batty in Blade Runner, where he's just got a, you know, he's got a shelf life and he's gonna die. That way things can't get too out of hand. And then, you know, we cut back to the Native American stuff going on here. And they're going to, you know, string him up, essentially. And we'll get to that in a second here. Uh, and then O2, who's, you know, trapped here in this cage, says, Dog, you're nothing but a slave. I'm not the one in the cage, pussycat. Back off, you two. 
crap, they'll tear each other apart, and it'll come out of our salary. Use the collar. Are you not? Because they choke him, and then, you know, the, the cat guy, the O2, is just, oh, oh, you say you're not a slave, but oh, shit, looks like you are, bud. And back to the stupid native stuff, they, they pierce his flesh, and they just, they string him up. Because I guess that's what you got to do. Smoke some peyote and then get hung by the flesh on your chest. And it does. Hear me, my son. I am Earth Spirit Woman. I am the raven wing of star-filled night and the flaming kiss of the sun. The wind is my breath, the rain my tears. The earth is my womb from which you were born. From the moment of your first heartbeat, we are linked, you and I. For of all my children, you are chosen. You are the warrior healer, Wikasa Wakan. You are the stalking wolf who will hunt the ravagers and fill the moonlit nights with your war cry. This is a, a nice two-page spread. This is a cool image. The four-legged of the earth, they lend you their powers. Strength of the grizzly, long claws warrior. Speed of the antelope, little bighorn, cunning of the coyote, trickster, the wings of the air, they lend you their powers. Wings of the hawk, wind dancer, eyes of the eagle, behold your true self. Next month, the blood. This was so stupid. This story here is good. The science fiction story is solid. It, it intrigues me. It makes me want to know more. But this native crap, like, pushed into the middle of it. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't understand. I, I, where's he going to go? Where is this possibly going to go? He's a full human, but he's going to get imbued with the powers of the four-legged of the earth, and then he's going to fight the hybrids of the four-legged of the earth. Okay. I guess. Like, he, this is what's going to get me to buy another comic book. I don't think so. This comic ran for 13 issues, one through 12 plus an issue zero. And I don't think that I could be compelled to buy these. I don't think you could give these to me as a gift and I would keep reading them. This is exactly so stereotypically what the white perspective was on Native Americans before the 21st century. It just feels like the stereotypical book a white guy would write with a Native hero. And it didn't get over back then. And it certainly wouldn't get over today. And that's another one of the things that appealed to me about Doug Garrett's Lone Wolf, was it wasn't the stereotypical Native American character, Native American story. Or you just, you put a, put a feather in his hair and, oh, look, we got the long haired feather in his hair native and he's going to join with the animals to save the planet. Okay. I mean, I guess, Iron Eyes Cody, whatever you say, bud. And it's comics like this. This is, this is literally why I was excited to write a 38 page story in the Legends of the Lone Wolf anthology book that's available right now on Indiegogo. You can see the link in the description below. Because my grandfather grew up on a reservation. As a kid, I frequently went to hear Native American stories told in a longhouse. So my perspective is a little different than the average 80s and 90s white dude. Like every friggin' Native American character in a comic book in the 20th century looked like this. Every one of them, I don't care what company you wanna talk about, Marvel, Image, DC, all the same. Turok from Valiant, all the same. And I wanted to tell a story that was different and make sure that a specific tribe or tribes get represented accurately. I mean, like, each tribe has its own unique lifestyle, its own unique culture, its own unique look. And you just, you don't see that represented in comic books. And I'm not gonna go into a dissertation on representation or anything like that. It's just, I, I grew up around it, and so I know a little bit about it, and I take a little bit of pride in knowing about it, and I, I have a lot of reverence for the stories that were told to me by a man named Chief Laluska, and so I wanted to draw on that rather than this 
fictionalized character that we seem to have created in America of the, the brave Native American. I mean, it's fine to, to take that, the essence of that, that character that we think of when you think of a buffalo nickel, right? It's fine to lean on that a little bit, but you damn sure need to do some research when you're writing a story. I don't care if it's about a Native American. I don't care if it's about an Amish guy. You need to learn some stories. You need to draw from the true history if you want it to be good and original and thought-provoking and compel readers to want to read more of what you're writing. Putting some war paint on their face and a feather in their hair, that's not doing it. That's not cutting it for me. I can tell you that. Not even close. I think it's kind of it's embarrassing. It's a little humiliating. It's kind of degrading to say, oh, all these natives are all the same. I'm so sick of this. You know, no matter what skin tone you are, you're the same. You're all the same. You think the same. You have the same thoughts. Notice it's people. Notice that it's people who have a hive mind who think that everyone else has a hive mind too. Isn't that odd? How ironic. So when I had the opportunity to write my feature length story for Legends of the Lone Wolf, I took that seriously. And I wrote a story that involved Cowlitz Indians and Klickitat Indians because I grew up in the Northwest with these native people. And so I'm bound, I'm bound by my honor to have some respect for that. And if you want a Native American story that doesn't suck, man, check out Lone Wolf issue number one and Legends of the Lone Wolf. You can get them right now for a measly 25 bucks. You're gonna get 100 pages of story for $25. And It'll do you right. If you don't believe me, go watch my Lone Wolf issue number one unboxing. I did a review right here on Crypto Comics of Lone Wolf issue number one when it came to my house. And, uh, and you'll see, you know, look at some of the art that my very talented Malay artist, Mior Munir, has drawn on our Indiegogo. Like, he's putting his heart and soul into that art. I put my heart and soul in a lifetime of knowledge into this story so that it could be the best it can be for you, the reader. It's not this nonsense. Oh, Union, there we go. Whatever. Oh, Dooms 4. I have it, we're gonna review it, but we have to wait until Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month to get into this one. Because uh, if you don't know, I have like almost every Rob Liefeld comic he ever made in the 90s. And I can't wait to just start going through random stuff that you're not going to believe even existed. Including a comic that he made with Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife. Get any woman you want. Crush Velvet. Read it and believe it. Tribe 5. Does this mean Tribe Issue 5? Because there wasn't an Issue 5. They did two issues at Image Comics. Believe it or not, Tribe was the highest selling African American comic written and drawn by African Americans, Larry Stroman and Todd Johnson, ever in the history of comics, still stands to this day as the highest selling. So these guys made a, these guys made a fortune, and then they only put out like two more issues. Go figure. Typical image, right? Here's some, uh, some nice art. This is, this is nice. Huh? I'm digging it. But it's, again, you know, I've, I think I've pontificated enough on my displeasure. Oh, same stupid image. Frank Miller writes Spawn number 11. Whoa, I forgot all about that. I reckon we're going to have to get into Spawn at some point too here on Crypto Comics, but I've pontificated enough on uh, crappy Native American comics that can't carry water for beautiful comic book readers out there, just like you. Tomorrow I'm going to come back with another comic book. It's from Image Comics, but it isn't about a Native American. It is, however, about a dude with long black hair, like a Native American. So stick around for Hellshock by Jay Lee. Legends of the Lone Wolf. 80 page full color anthology. With your support, we will bring you a perfect bound 80 page book of the highest quality. 
everyone involved has donated their time and talent, and all the money will go to printing and shipping before any of the creators turn a profit. Unlike other anthology books, Legends of the Lone Wolf contains a 38-page feature-length supernatural story. That's nearly twice the size of a regular comic book. This campaign is the only way to get the variant aged edition of Lone Wolf number one. This highly unique version of our first issue will be printed on a stunning aged newsprint and features a cover by the one and the only Mutt Man. So don't sit on your hands, Wolfomaniacs. You're gonna have to get out there and grab a copy for yourself. Ooh, yeah!